when you talk about the the tax reform of 1986 and talk about the uh, realignment of capital gains rates and dividend rates to How many speakers do we have left? in 1986 after the uh, reform there was a significant realignment of interest and liquidation in the real estate industry and I wonder if in fact we could approach that subject uh, in this tax reform in the time that we're living in now where we have already had a significant amount of liquidation and realignment in the real estate industry. I think that would be something we've got to talk about. Uh, secondly, in 86, there were options besides dividends for those that needed income. And there were less people in 86 that depended on income uh, there were less there were fewer seniors, so if you have a significant liquidation and realignment, uh, if you raise the dividend rate now, there are no alternatives for income. There, there are not the same alternatives for income that existed in 1986. I think you could probably get eight or ten percent on a long-term CD. So, if that significant realignment and, and liquidation takes place then does it in fact actually result in an increased tax revenue or does it have a very, does it have a flat effect or does it have a negative effect on it? Uh, and the last thing uh, is that the investors I talked to say at 15% they do not spend any time or money on tax avoidance, exchanges, et cetera. They they do the deal, they pay the tax, they go on down the road. They, they say that there is a rate at which they will return to the old behavior of avoiding the tax, uh, doing tax free exchanges, and in fact, if we raise that too high, uh, where, is the, where, where would the sweet spot be where you would not in fact have a decrease in, in tax revenues? No, that's a long question. Well, uh, certainly, uh, uh, when after the 1986 Act, if I were dealing with uh, real estate investors, I would go under an assumed name. So I'm not arguing that that it didn't have an adverse <laughs> impact on on that industry. But I think it, where most significantly had it was a substantial part of the financing of real estate uh, may, in fact, have been a bubble at that time. But it was because of the uh, uh, negative tax on, on real estate investment in effect that was in place. And so, yes, when you change things, there's going to be a, a discontinuity, a disruption in the marketplace, and that's inevitable whatever change you make because the market is, is adjusted to whatever current law is. And that's unfortunate, but sometimes you just simply have to break a few eggs, if, if you will. Uh, how big it would be in this situation, uh, I'm not sure. I think for the, the issue about elderly and dividend income, uh, that uh, it, it, at some point, if your concern is, is that uh, lower and middle income uh, uh, taxpayers, elderly, uh, the tax on their, uh, on their retirement income, you can think, still have comprehensive tax reform and meet the design constraints if you provide preferences for uh, up to a certain dollar amount. Now, I'm not advocating that as a theoretical matter of tax policy, but if that's what your economic and, and social concern is, which are very valid, then think of those alternatives as well, I guess I would say.